Hello, 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 everybody. This is Mr. Folly, who is not able to write right now. There we go. Mr. Folly, and welcome to part three, 5.3. This three means we're in 5.3 for big ideas. And we're going to look at the graphs of kinetics. So we're going to look at a zero order reaction. And I want to emphasize to you guys how the Y and the X are in our integrated rate law. Okay, the other things don't really matter much. Well, I guess the slope is quite important, so let me drop a little highlighter love on that one. Um, but on this setup, a zero-order reaction is going to have A equals negative KT, and we don't really care much about this, okay? And um, that's not something that's made a big impact on any of the questions that I've seen, okay? So when we're graphing this, we're going to graph concentration versus time. So notice anything in brackets is concentration, which is molarity, versus time, okay? Um, and that's it. First order reaction, same setup, but we're going to graph L and A versus T. Now, I want to emphasize on this, A sub T is the amount at time T, and A sub O is the amount, I just misspelled amount, but you can tell where my mind is going, the amount original. Okay, so if you're ever doing that A and T thing, you can do a subtraction and a calculation. There are some calculations where they just say, oh, let me give you, um, let's give you a math problem. Um, they'll give you every variable but one. So if you do that, you do need to use that number, but that's much more rare. Second order, again, we have Y equals MX plus B, and we're looking at the same deal. Y, whoops, Y, M, X. Hopefully that's not too bad. Um, Half-lives can be found graphically and determine the order of the reaction. Okay, so half-lives, so if I start with the concentration of five, and then I'm looking at two and a half, this is the half-life. This is the half-life, because again, I'm starting at five. This is the half-life. They all have different half-lives. Okay. So nuclear reactions have a half-life of this, right? T one half equals ln two over K because nuclear reactions are always first order. No tricks, no exceptions, okay? A shorter half-life means a larger K. And that's a nice little dealie to know, okay? Um, and half-lives are, the other thing about a half-life is because it's first order, what we can do is we look at a first order reaction right here what I can do is ln, um, amount of time T, ln 50 equals negative KT plus ln, my original amount say was 100. So do you see how I could have this, how my 50 is half of that? Or I could do 1 in 0.5. So you can do math to figure out those half-lives if you're ever stuck in love math. Okay, summarizing again. Dun, dun, dun. Differential rate law, integrated rate law. There you go. So differential rate law, change in A over T equals K, change in A over T equals K, change in A over T equals K, A squared, okay? So notice with zero order, that means this would be A to the zero. A to the zero is one, anything to the zero order is one. First order, K, A to the one, right? Second order, K, A squared. Concentration versus time. Um, notice how these are hard to distinguish with your eye. Right? Um, so we do that graphically and we compare our squared. Okay? Um, and that will help us figure out which one is better. So notice how this is when we um, look at this guy right here. Uh, I guess we don't really want concentration versus time for any of them anyway, but that's, I was going to say which one's most linear. This is the most linear. And notice how that is first order. Okay? And I hate that we've changed the order on this. I wish I hadn't done it that way. But um, when we go back up here and we're looking at the y equals mx plus b, 1 over a, right? So on this one, we're going to have a equals, oh, don't do that to me, negative kt um, plus, LNA, plus a naught. Right? Straight line plot to determine the rate constant, okay? So when you plot these, now notice how this is constant. Come on. 
This is concentration. This is LN concentration. This is 1 over concentration. Basically, it doesn't matter whether it's positive or negative. The graph will tell you. Okay? So anytime you have a straight line plot, that will tell you what order it is. Okay? So that means that anytime LN over concentra LN concentration versus T is straight line, this is not and this is not. If I ever have a time when this is a straight line, that means that this one will not be and this one will not be. So do you see how only one can be a straight line at a time? Okay. Relative rate versus concentration. And this is where, you know, if it's zero order, no effect. Zero. Zero effect. Right? This is the same. Remember I talked about it, it's the same if it's first order? And this is squared. Yeah. And the half-life equations, which we've seen before in units. For rate laws, remember, exponents are not coefficients. They are not coefficients. They are not coefficients. Um, rate laws must be determined by experiment. Rate laws can use formation of a product or loss of a reactant to determine rate. Only concentrations are used. So that means no solids nor liquids as their concentration is constant. Good, that's 5-3. Let's hop to 5-4. Elementary reactions and reaction mechanisms. Elementary reactions are the simplest reactions, right? So elementary steps are the simple steps that make up an overall reaction. An elementary step determines the orders in the rate law. So the elementary step determines the order in the rate law. That's very important. And it's going to be the slowest Elementary step is what's going to determine the orders in the rate. Intermediates pull down the reactants above to add them to the rate law. Elementary reactions have one step. That means an elementary reaction, not an elementary step, an elementary reaction have only one step. The entire reaction occurs in one step. This is the only time that the exponents are the rate law. Now that this is the slowest step. And the slowest step, I'm going to add that to the slowest. Oh, look at that. Isn't that interesting? The slowest elementary step is where? Is that this? Slowest elementary. That's my this. Higher order reactions are more difficult to execute, so they are more rare. Third order happens, but shouldn't be expected. So you shouldn't expect a 5'9 guy to be able to dunk a basketball, but every once in a while it happens, okay? Mechanisms must match the rate law and the stoichiometry, okay? What this means is um, they have to cancel properly. Okay. Write the reaction and the rate law for A through D above. So let's look at A. Mechanism 1, with the first step being the rate determining step. So that means what that would look like is this would say, I'm just, I wrote rate and I wanted to write slow. This would say slow. This would say fast. This would say fast. This would say fast. Okay. So my rate law is only affected by my slowest step. So rate is going to equal... Oh, I forgot K. Darn it. Rate equals K. H2O2 times I negative. Now, each of these have a coefficient of 1. So they have a 1 up here, which I wouldn't write, to be honest with you. Okay? That's my rate law. All right? And I use the slowest step to do it. The overall reaction, now I'm going to look at these guys, and I'm going to see what I can cancel out. So see how OI negative is on both sides? That would cancel out. Um, what else can I cancel out? I think that's it. Nope, I got an I2 to cancel out here. Okay, so those are going to cancel out. Okay, nothing else cancels out, but I do have some things I got to collect. Okay, so I'm going to write this reaction now. I have H2O2. I have, oops, sorry, this, I found something else that cancels out. Hoy cancels out. Okay, so I have H2O2. I have two I negatives. 
I have three I negatives. So I have H2O2 plus three I negatives, and then I have an H positive left over, and another H positive left over, plus two H positives, yields. Okay, so I've got one water, two waters, plus I three negative. Now this should balance, so let's see if it works. I've got two H's, four H's, I've got four H's. I've got two O's, I've got two O's. I've got three I's, I've got three I's. And that's good, okay? Uh, my overall charge here is negative three plus, plus two, so it's negative one. Over here, my overall charge is negative one. So the charges have to balance out as well. So we're good, I got one. Woo! Wasn't that fun? Of course it was. So let's see one where we've got um, mechanism one with the second step rate determining. Now I just want to point out the overall reaction will be the same. So I'm going to erase this. Actually, let's do mechanism two. I'm still going to erase this. Mechanism two with the second step being rate determining. So let's do that. So if that was the case, then I'm going to write the word slow here. Slow. I'm going to write fast and fast. And it would be written like exactly like that, okay? So the rate determining step is the slowest step. So my rate law is going to be rate equals K. Uh-oh, I got stuff appearing. So I'm going to erase everything above so it doesn't come back to haunt me. Rate equals um, K times, so I'm looking at this guy, Hoy. I negative, H positive, okay? Now, because, let's look at, notice I have Hoy up here. Hoy is an intermediate, okay? So because Hoy is an intermediate, I'm going to replace Hoy with these, okay? So I'm going to instead say rate equals K H2O2. Now notice I've got I negative in both places. So I'm gonna make that I negative squared. And I've got H positive in two places, H positive squared. So because I have an intermediate, my intermediate pulls all of those down into it, okay? And because I have two I's, two I's means I have a coefficient of two, two I negatives. And two H positives would be that as well. All right, so I just did that. H, the rate determining step is the slowest step. Imagine a reaction occurring moles of times. That means times 10 to the 23rd. That's bajillions, right? The steps have to wait for the slowest step. The slowest step will be labeled. Slow step, fast step, or slow, fast, fast. That's it. So I, I heard my timer go off. I kind of like that. So let's hop to it, and I will say our favorite word of two toodles.